Object counters or product counters are important applications used in industries, shopping malls, etc. They count objects or products automatically and so reduce human efforts. Considering that each day several thousands of these products need to be processed by a single worker, a product counter will save a lot of time and eliminate any counting mistakes that will require a recount of an entire page. We will discuss different situations like for example if the products which are to be counted or touching each other then how we will count them. In this episode we will study how balls can be counted if they are touching each other. So before we start working on this project, first let's study a model and find a solution. Then we will make a protein simulation to check our circuit connections and programming. As this device will be used in industry, so we will have to make it quite efficient. We will not be using any delays. It should be fast enough so that it can count even hundreds of balls per second. Let's get started. This is a rough model created in SOLIDWORKS 2016. If you want to learn how to make 3D models in SOLIDWORKS, you can watch my tutorials. Now let's study this model and find a solution how to count the balls which are touching. Let's activate the section view. As you can see, if we use a sensor in the very center of this pipe, then it results in an abnormal counting as there would be no change in state of the sensor. So it will count these two balls as one ball. When there is no touching, then there is no problem. As we will be using the entrop for counting the balls and for that we need a change in state. Now the question is how to solve this problem. This problem can be solved by changing the sensor position. As you can see we have a small area over here. If we use a sensor in this area then we can solve this problem even if the balls are touching. As the small area will always change the state of the sensor. This is the simulation of the balls counting system. As you can see, the 16 into 2 LCD pin number 1 is connected with the ground. Pin number 2 is connected with the 5 volts. Pin number 3 which is the contrast pin of the LCD should be connected with a variable resistor. Then the variable resistor can be used to control the LCD's contrast. As this is just a simulation so that's why there is no need to add a variable resistor. The RS pin of the LCD is connected with pin number 9 of the Arduino. Pin number 5 of the LCD is connected with the ground. The enable pin of the LCD is connected with pin number 8 of the Arduino. Pins 4, 5, 6 and 7 of the Arduino are connected with the data pins D4 to D7 of the LCD. 16 into 2 LCD has basically 16 pins but as you can see pin number 15 and pin number 16 are not shown. During the real hardware connections you need to connect pin number 15 with 5 volts and pin number 16 with the ground. These two push buttons which are connected with pin number 2 and pin number 3 represents the infrared sensors. So this push button will be used for counting the balls while this push button will be used to reset the relay. This is a 12 volt SPDT type relay. SPDT stands for single pole double throw. This type of relay has 5 pins, 2 coil pins, common pin, normally open and normally closed pin. This is a 2N2222 NPN transistor. The emitter is connected with the ground while the collector is connected with the relay coil. While the other side of the relay coil is connected with the 12 volt as it's a 12 volt SPDT type relay. A tinker resistor is connected with the base of 2N2222 transistor. This transistor is controlled using pin number 13 of the Arduino. The purpose of this relay is to trigger the other circuits. It can be used to turn on a buzzer with the box is filled. 
or this relay can be used to trigger the pneumatic cylinder to push a box. For the relay driver circuit design calculations, watch my tutorial. The link is given in the description. Now let's uh, play this simulation. As you can see, currently the total balls, uh, which is the total production, is zero. And also the current balls, which is the total number of the balls in a box, is also zero. Each box can have a maximum of five balls. So when the box is filled with five balls, the relay is turned on, which at this point we can say is a buzzer. As you can see, the relay is turned on. Now if I press the reset button, the relay will turn off. This way we can monitor the total production and we can also monitor the current number of balls in a box. Now let's discuss the programming. First of all, we start with hash include liquidcrystal.h. Liquid Crystal is a library which is specially created for the 16 into 2 LCD, but it can also be used with 16 into 4 LCD and some other types. Then I defined some pins which I already explained in the simulation section. Initialize the library with the numbers of the interface pins. Integer relay equals 13 to signal another machine or turn on a light or a buzzer. This will signal the operator or another machine that the box is full. Then you can manually remove the box or push it through a pneumatic cylinder etc. Then I defined some variables for the balls counting and a variable ball if which will be used as a flag. Integer reset B is equal to 3 to reset the relay. This can be a laser or an infrared sensor or any other sensor which you want to use for resetting. As you know my friends every Arduino and Mega program has at least two functions which are the white setup and white loop function. White means that this function is not returning any value and the empty parentheses means that this function is not taking any arguments as the input. White setup function. Set up the LCD's number of columns and rows. Print a message to the LCD. Attach interrupt 0, 8, falling. Attach interrupt is a function and it takes three arguments as the input, the interrupt number, which is 0, which is on pin number 2 of the Arduino, and this is a hardware interrupt. Then a user defined function, which is 8. So each time the interrupt occurs, this function will be executed. The interrupt will occur on the falling edge. You can also select the rising edge. Then I used the pen mode function to set the buttons as input and set the variable to 0. Then start a while loop function. As I said, ball f variable will be used as a flag and will be used to update the LCD. This way we can stop the unnecessary repetition of code. If ball f is equal to is equal to 1, the LCD is updated only when ball f is equal to 1. This way the controller won't be busy in printing the values on LCD again and again. Then we simply print values on the LCD and change the value of the ball f to 0. If digital read a reset button is equal to is equal to low. If the reset button is pressed then simply turn off the relay. This is a user defined function which is used to count the total number of balls and the total number of balls in the box. 5 represent the total number of balls in the box. This number can be changed. So if the number of balls in the box is greater than or equal to 5, the relay will turn on. 
In upcoming tutorials, I'll make an advanced version of the industrial production monitoring system, which can be used in industries for wireless production monitoring from anywhere around the world. Make sure you subscribe right now so that you never miss any of my upcoming tutorials. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.